Nebra Sky Disk from Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia at wikipedia.org. The Nebra Sky Disk is a bronze disk of around 30 centimeters, 12 inches diameter, and a weight of 2.2 kilograms, 4.9 pounds, with a blue-green patina and inlaid with gold symbols. These are interpreted generally as a sun or full moon, a lunar crescent, and stars, including a cluster interpreted as the Pleiades. Two golden arcs along the sides marking the angle between the solstices were added later. A final addition was another arc at the bottom, surrounded with multiple strokes of uncertain meaning, variously interpreted as a solar barge with numerous oars, as the Milky Way, or as a rainbow. The disk is attributed to a site near Nebra, Saxony-Anhalt in Germany, and associatively dated to circa 1600 BC. It has been associated with the Bronze Age Unetis culture. The style in which the disc is executed was unlike any artistic style then known from the period, with the result that the object was initially suspected of being a forgery, but it is now widely accepted as authentic. The Nebra Sky Disc features the oldest concrete depiction of the cosmos yet known from anywhere in the world. In June 2013, it was included in the UNESCO Memory of the World Register and termed one of the most important archaeological finds of the 20th century. Discovery The disc Two bronze swords, two hatchets, a chisel, and fragments of spiral bracelets were discovered in 1999 by Henry Westfall and Mario Renner while they were treasure hunting with a metal detector. Archaeological artifacts were the property of the state in Saxony-Anhalt. The hunters were operating without a license and knew their activity constituted looting and was illegal. They damaged the disc with their spade and destroyed parts of the site. The next day, Westfall and Renner sold the entire hoard for 31,000 Deutschmarks to a dealer in Cologne. The hoard changed hands within Germany over the next two years, being sold for up to a million Deutschmarks. By 2001, knowledge of its existence had become public. In February 2002, the state archaeologist Harold Meller acquired the disc in a police-led sting operation in Basel from a couple who had put it on the black market for 700,000 Deutschmarks. The original finders were eventually traced. In a plea bargain, they led police and archaeologists to the discovery site. Archaeologists opened a dig at the site and uncovered evidence that supports the looters' claims. There are traces of bronze artifacts in the ground, and the soil at the site matches soil samples found clinging to the artifacts. The disc and its accompanying finds are now held at the State Museum of Prehistory in Halle. The two looters received sentences of four months and ten months, respectively, from a Naumburg court in September 2003. They appealed, but the appeals court raised their sentences to six and twelve months, respectively. The discovery site is a prehistoric enclosure, encircling the top of a 252 meters, 827 foot elevation in the Zigaroda forest, known as Middleberg, Central Hill, some 60 kilometers west of Leipzig. The surrounding area is known to have been settled in the Neolithic era, and Ziegelroda Forest contains approximately 1,000 barrows. The enclosure is oriented in such a way that the sun seems to set every solstice behind the Brocken, the highest peak of the Harz Mountains, some 80 kilometers to the northwest. The treasure hunters claimed the artifacts were discovered within a pit inside the bank and ditch enclosure. Dating the precise dating of the Nebra Sky Disc depended upon the dating of a number of Bronze Age weapons, which were offered for sale with the disc and said to be from the same site. These axes and swords can be dated typologically to the mid-second millennium BC. Radiocarbon dating of a birch bark particle found on one of the swords to between 1600 and 1560 BC confirmed this estimate. This corresponds to the date of burial, at which time the disc had likely been in existence for several generations. Origin of the Metals According to an initial analysis of trace elements by X-ray fluorescence by E. Pernica, then at the University of Freiburg, the copper originated at Bischofshofen in Austria, while the gold was thought to be from the Carpathian Mountains. A more recent analysis found that the gold used in the first phase was from the river Karnan in Cornwall, United Kingdom. The tin present in the bronze was also of Cornish origin. History the disc as preserved was developed in four stages, from Meller 2004. 1. Initially, the disc had 32 small round gold circles, a large circular plate, and a large crescent-shaped plate attached. The circular plate is interpreted as either the sun or the full moon, the crescent shape as the crescent moon, 
or either the sun or the moon undergoing eclipse, and the dots as stars, with the cluster of seven dots likely representing the Pleiades. 2. At some later date, two arcs, constructed from gold of a different origin, as shown by its chemical impurities, were added at opposite edges of the disk. To make space for these arcs, one small circle was moved from the left side toward the center of the disk, and two of the circles on the right were covered over, so that thirty remain visible. The two arcs span an angle of eighty-two degrees, correctly indicating the angle between the positions of sunset at summer and winter solstice, at the latitude of the Middleburg, fifty-one degrees north. Given that the arcs relate to solar phenomena, it is likely the circular plate represents the sun, not the moon. 3. The final addition was another arc at the bottom, the sunboat, again made of gold from a different origin. 4. By the time the disk was buried, it also had 39 holes punched out around its perimeter, each approximately 3 millimeters in diameter. Significance the disc may be an astronomical instrument as well as an item of religious significance. The blue-green patina of the bronze may have been an intentional part of the original artifact. The find is regarded as reconfirming that the astronomical knowledge and abilities of the people of the European Bronze Age included close observation of the yearly course of the sun and the angle between its rising and setting points at the summer and winter solstices. While much older earthworks and megalithic astronomical complexes such as the Gothic Circle and Stonehenge had already been used to mark the solstices, the disc is the oldest known portable instrument to allow such measurements. Pastor, however, sees no evidence that the disc was a practical device for solar measurements. Ewan McKee suggests that the Nebra disc may be linked to the solar calendar reconstructed by Alexander Tom from his analysis of standing stone alignments in Britain. Authenticity. There were initial suspicions that the disc might be an archaeological forgery. Peter Schauer of the University of Regensburg, Germany, argued in 2005 that the Nebra disc was a fake and that he could prove that the patina of the disc could have been created with urine, hydrochloric acid, and a blowtorch within a short amount of time. He had to admit in court that he had never held the disc in his own hands, unlike 18 scientists who had actually examined the disc. Richard Harrison, professor of European prehistory at the University of Bristol and an expert on the Beaker people, allowed his initial reaction to be quoted in a BBC documentary. Quote, when I first heard about the Nebra disc, I thought it was a joke. Indeed, I thought it was a forgery. Because it's such an extraordinary piece that it wouldn't surprise any of us that a clever forger had cooked this up in a back room and sold it for a lot of money. End quote. Although Harrison had not seen the sky disc when he was interviewed, his skepticism was reasonable at that point, but the disc is widely accepted now as authentic and is dated to roughly 1600 BC on grounds of typological classification of the associated finds. As the item was not excavated using archaeological methods, even its claimed providence could have been fictitious, hence its authentication has depended on microphotography of corrosion crystals, which has produced images of structures that could not be reproduced by a faker. Harald Miller, lecturing to the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland in April 2008, gave a list of facts supporting the authenticity of the disc and for its having been found at the site on the Middleburg. The most persuasive of the latter was the discovery by the archaeologists in the pit in which the looters said they had found the metalwork of a fragment of gold leaf exactly fitting the gap present in the gold leaf covering of the sun symbol when it was originally recovered. Exhibition The disc was the center of the exhibition entitled Der Geschmiedete Himmel, German, The Smithied Sky, showing 1600 Bronze Age artifacts, including the Trundholm Sun Chariot, shown at Halle from the 15th of October 2004 to the 22nd of May 2005, from the 1st of July to the 22nd of October 2005 in Copenhagen, from the 9th of November 2005 to the 5th of February 2006 in Vienna, from the 10th of March to the 16th of July 2006 in Mannheim, and from the 29th of September 2006 to the 25th of February 2007 in Basel. On the 20th of June 2007, a multimedia visitor center was opened near the discovery site at Nebra. The disc is part of the permanent exhibition in the Halle State Museum of Prehistory, Landesmuseum für Vorgeschichte in Halle. Legal Issues the state of Saxony-Anhalt has registered the disc as a trademark, which has resulted in two lawsuits. 
In 2003, Saxony-Anhalt successfully sued the city of Kerfurt for depicting the disc design on souvenirs. Saxony-Anhalt also successfully sued the publishing houses Piper and Hain over an abstracted depiction of the disc on book covers. The Magdeburg court assessed the case's relevance according to German copyright law. The defenders argued that as a cultic object, the disc had already been published in the Bronze Age, and that consequently, all protection of intellectual property associated with it has long expired. The plaintiff, on the other hand, argued that the Edidio princeps of the disc is recent, and according to German law, protected for 25 years until 2027. Another argument concerns the question whether a notable work of art may be registered as a trademark in the first place. See also Golden Hat, Rilaton Barrow, Mold Cape, Trondholm Sun Chariot, Tumulus Culture, and Antikythera Mechanism. This audio was recorded on July 3rd, 2019.